Alrighty guys, we're back for Mono Green Aggro, and this is an Outlaws of Thunder Junction standard brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's briefly go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked. Check out all these new cards packed in. I'm rocking all four Gold Vein Hydras. Is all four going to be worth it? I have no idea. This is an X and Green. Zero, zero. Vigilance, Trample, Haste. Okay, I like where this is going. When it enters the battlefield, it comes in with X plus one plus one counters on it. Okay, nice. Now, also, when it dies, you create a number of tapped treasure tokens equal to its power. Super interested to see how much this is going to do. Essentially, like, think of it as, like, a four drop. That's a three, three Vigilant Trample Haste. And when it dies, you get three treasure tokens. All that sounds really good, especially when you pair it with other cards that work really well with plus one plus one counters right which we'll go over some of those in just a second i want to go over the rest of the new stuff like trash the town for example this is a one greed mana instant speed however it has spree so you get to choose one or more additional costs here so for plus two you put two plus one plus one counters on target creature so essentially three mana put two plus one plus one counters on target creature okay so that's pretty expensive but it's really like the utility of these cards that we want to look at because, you know, you get to choose one or more additional costs. So you can choose some of these other ones too. So like plus one, target creature gains trample until end of turn. Okay. And then there's another plus one. Until end of turn, target creature gains whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw two cards. I think more often than not, we might be activating that ability because uh, having the ability to reestablish your hand in mono green like this just seems really good, man. So for two mana, target a creature that's getting through anyways, right? Because it is instant speed uh, or target a creature with trample or anything like that. That deals that combat damage to a player and then you restock your hand for two cards for just two mana. That seems pretty solid, man. I like it. Snakeskin Veil. It's back, guys. Wait a minute. That's not the new artwork. Oh well. <laughs> Snakeskin Veil is a one mana instant, and you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. It gains hexproof until end of turn. Nice. So fitting the plus one plus one counter theme beautifully here. More new cards. We got Bristle Bill Spine Sower. That that's a name. That this is a two mana, two two legendary creature. It has a landfall, so whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Uh, so realistically in this deck, it's probably only going to happen once each turn, but I still really like that ability. Also has a bottom ability here that could really come in handy. Or like wrapping up the game, for example. Three double green, double the number of plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. That could be huge, man, especially if you're doubling the counters on a gold vein hydra too. So we have 25 total land in here, which I do believe is going to be enough to see that five mana when we need to see it or just see the landfall happening every turn as well. So course one of the lands is a who endures as well we do have one more new card to go over alloy alchemist this is a two mana three two as trample it has plot for one and a green when you plot it you can pay that cost and exile this card cast it as a sorcery on a later turn without paying its mana cost plot only as a sorcery now what's neat about this one though is when it becomes plotted target creature gets plus three plus two, and gains trample until end of turn. It's a little bit of a combat trick on here, although it's not really a trick, it has to be at sorcery speed. Still, kind of neat, man. And so, like, slamming trample on, like, a Corian Beast Caller sounds really good to me, and then you just get to play this creature for free on a later turn. Yeah. So, Corian Beast Caller, of course, made the cut. Getting all these extra creatures onto the board with this is going to be excellent, especially if it's free off of, like, an Alchemist. Sharp-Eyed Rookie also making the cut. Also another great way to restock our hand with the clues on this too. The Vigilance comes in handy very often as well. I think it's going to be excellent in here, especially with this whole plus one plus one counter theme. Got Bloated Contaminator. The ability to proliferate is going to be great in here. Archdruid, Archdruid's Charm. Now this is a way to get an extra land on the board if we wanted to activate the Bristle Bill uh, top ability a couple times, right? Other than that, I think it's that middle ability that we activate more often than anything else on here. So plus one plus one counter theme fits, and then it deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. That happens to come in handy all the time in these style of decks. Speaking of like fight spells like this, we also have a couple tail swipe. We have a hard hitting question that can also hit planeswalkers too. And more creatures packed in. I'm opting for the scout this time because when you explore, if you hit land in this build in particular, you don't mind that at all. But also, if you don't hit land, it fits the whole plus one plus one counter theme. Honorable mentions, guys. Ozolith almost made the cut. 
Okay, we'll go ahead and save the more in-depth discussion for the end of the video. In the meantime, let's go ahead, take this into some ranked and see how we do. Okay, we'll see if we can get right into that first game here. In the meantime, what am I expecting from the build? I don't know, man. I think it's going to be good, actually. I think it's going to be better than uh, the last video where we did Rakdos Dragons. I feel like it's going to be a little bit more consistent, especially. Most most of the time when you're playing a monocolored deck, it's usually pretty consistent. But Oh, look at this hand. This is a good curve, huh? Let's do this. A really good curve. I'll skip the alchemist for now. We got a one, two, three punch to think about. Come on, counter. Nice. Tail swipe. We should keep that. Especially if we're up against mono red. And they went first too, so. Nice. The fallout land. That's neat. Second mana. They're going for the plot for the turn, huh? Okay, they knew we had Tail Swipe, so they didn't want to just, like, play this. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could have easily killed it with the Tail Swipe for the turn. Okay. I guess we stay on track here, then. We could plot the Alchemist. Swing for five. Three Alchemist next turn. It's definitely just Rookie for the turn, though, right? I'll swing for two. I think we can keep up pace. I think it's going to be very difficult to keep up pace, though. So hopefully we can do a thing. It's just we have one heck of a one, two, three. So the swing makes sense. Oh, they go forge. I'm surprised they didn't go slick shot show off. I guess it's a similar concept here where they're concerned that we're immediately going to remove it with the tail swipe. So a little bit of setup with the forge too. Yeah, that, I guess that makes sense. Hydra is a good draw. All right. Contaminator comes down, buffs the Sharp-Eyed Rookie, becomes a huge threat for next turn as a proliferate onto our first two creatures would just be wild, huh? Blue is on the board. Fourth mana from Mono Red, and I'm, I'm not feeling too stressed out right now, surprisingly. The opponent might have gotten a little unlucky here. Okay, here they go, here they go. There's the free Slick Shot. Okay, uh, convenient target is an aura. Okay, and the festivities get that full buff and makes our blocks a little worse here because now it trades into Swift Spear. Is that trade worth? Oh, wow, they're really going for it. Um, So we go Contaminator into Etching since they have no cards left in hand and take 11? Eee, I don't know about taking 11 here. No matter what, we're going to kill that Slick Shot, though. Turn it. They can play that on the Swiss Spear. Respect Enchanted Creature. Going to have... Okay. Okay. I want to keep the Sharp-Eyed Rookie, especially with the Vigilance, so... Yep. We'll see what happens. Down to five. Now we have to remember Urbrast Forge is uh, going to be a 3-1 next turn, too. But how do we want to do this? We have 7, 8, 9 on the board. 10. Oh, we have lethal damage. We, in fact, have lethal damage. Very nice. So we'll start with the Tail Swipe. I suppose it doesn't really matter at that point. We'll hit the uh, Slick Shot Show Off. That's 10 on the board. And then we can plot the Alchemist onto the Scout and swing. There it is. Very nice. Well, that is exactly what the deck is trying to do, huh? Holy cow. Uh, could we have won with the Hydra that turn, too? No, it would have been a... It would have... The opponent would have been at one, right? Yeah, I believe so. Would have been cool to play the Hydra that turn too, though. Well, I can't complain though too much, huh? 
<laughs> I think the Hydra will hopefully do a thing in these later matches as well, as long as we see it. There's a reason I'm playing all four. I really, really want to see it do a thing today. But 25 mana too, it's just not going to be unheard of to have like six mana on the board. Opponent drops a board wipe and you're still not sad about it because next turn you're just dropping a full power Hydra. Okay, definitely not as good of a curve this time around. Opponent goes first. We'll give it a shot though. Double Hydra. Like I said, I want it I want it to do a thing, so. Alright, mana, I guess, is not bad. But right into sharp eyed rookie, I would say. We could we could um oh, a third Hydra. Well, I guess. As much mana as possible for the rest of the game wouldn't be a, wouldn't be terrible, huh? Just curve out with the Hydras at that point. All right, so Rookie comes down. Now we could plot the Alchemist to buff the Rookie that way, or we could just play the Alchemist and buff the Rookie to a 3-3. Three, three. Blinking. Okay, we're up against some ramp. They get a Plains on the board. Yeah, luckily they missed the life gain there. Okay. So plot only as a sorcery. So we'd want to do that first. And then we'd play it next turn to buff it next turn. I guess that's a little bit more damage, huh? If we do it this way. And, and getting like the, the trample over top of this as well. That's pretty cool. Good chunk of damage. Now we have a 3-3 Hydra and an Alchemist coming in next turn. So the Hydra won't buff the Rookie, but we have three Hydras, so we should play one anyways. Ooh, good ramp from the opponent here. A great turn for them. Wonder what's on their top end. They're rocking Naya colors. I feel like Titan of Industry would be in there for some reason. World Soul's Rage, get rid of the Sharp-Eyed Rookie. That probably means they have a second rage in hand, right? Probably. I think these decks would want all four World Souls Rage, too, so. All right, so every turn play a Hydra could be pretty good. But Beast Caller, 1-1 one, one Hydra, buff the Beast Caller, drop the Alchemist, buff the Beast Caller. That, that kind of does a thing, too, doesn't it? Are we concerned about a board wipe? One second, opponent. I am pondering. Yeah, Beast Caller was a good draw. Can't deny that. I guess... I guess we don't play around a board wipe because at any point the opponent can do their top end things. Like, they ramped really, really well. Really effective here. Um... I'll do that in main phase two. We'll swing for one. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Guys, that's free all the time. It doesn't have to be that turn. I could have pl still played around the board wipe. <laughs> Super punished, man. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You like the plot just kind of chills over here. We didn't have to play that that turn at all. At all, bro. Well, they got their other world souls rage. Now we just go full powered Hydra. Also, the exile made it so that way we didn't get any treasure tokens off the Hydra, too. Uh, they have the power up here, but luckily that's just a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, we're definitely in trouble as I lost a little bit. I lost a little bit off of that alchemist for sure, because we could have played that that turn to reestablish our board. However, it's worth noting that the opponent may not have played the Sunfall if we didn't have three creatures. Okay, second World Soul's Rage, getting a whole bunch of life gain from the uh, new Capenna lands here. And these all come out untapped too because of Splunking. Ready Courtyard, looks like they still have three mana available. They can still power up Incubator. <gasps> Ossification. Oh no, all the exiles making these uh, hydras a little bit obsolete, honestly. There we go, Snakeskin Veil. 
Return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Are we dead? Oh, we're dead. Aren't we? That's only three mana. Oh, no. Flashback. Five mana. And they have ten... Um... Fifteen... <laughs> so they have World Souls Rage for eight. So we are, in fact, not dead here. Uh, so Charm. Get rid of Splunking. That's not great. So Hydra for three isn't great either, but keeping the Snakeskin Veil open is probably pretty good, especially if they decide... So X is three. Yeah, we kind of got picked apart this game. And you never know, they may not have played that Sunfall in until we actually had enough creatures on the board like they potentially could have held back especially when they're gaining so much life here too i wonder what else is on their top end outside of the world soul's rage they still got basic lands to grab too surprisingly okie dokies this is nine damage if they want unless i miscounted somewhere i suppose that's possible Oh, also, okay, okay. So if it's a swing here, this is sorcery speed. So we will be able to go Hydra. It has Hexproof, so now they can't target Hydra at least. Would we have cared if they targeted Hydra? Probably. They hold back the Rage for the turn. Our Strudge Charm can also find us a creature. I mean, we die next turn no matter what, right? So I suppose... I suppose, GG opponent, let's see what we end up finding. What a Contaminator, Sharp-Eyed Rookie. The Alchemist plot isn't terrible. Bristly Bill. Okay. Then we have the Scout, too. I guess the other Hydra isn't terrible, right? Um, at that point, we could grab, like, I don't know. Like, what's the worst here? <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Yeah, what's the worst to grab? I guess just more hasty creatures is the best to grab. Since no matter what, that World Soul's Rage is just going to hit our face anyways. This is kind of a wild card, dude. That Vigilance is pretty insane. Definitely picked apart from the deck. Definitely lost a little bit of, um... Oh, good game opponent, by the way. Ah, I don't I don't know which one... Which one's the good game that's Western? Which one do I drop there? Hold on. Let me look at these. Oh, I can't look at these. Crap. Tarnation. <laughs> I don't know which one of those is the GG. Maybe we'll have to get it as, uh as we get more of the pass, right? The mastery pass. Anyways, yeah, losing that alchemist to the sunfall, that was really silly because we didn't have to do that. We could have played this after. That would have just been a little bit of extra damage though. I think that was still heavily leaning towards the opponent, even if I would have saved that and actually played it out properly too. And, and assuming they still dropped the sunfall on only two of our creatures as well. So what's this? Mid game pack or uh, mid video pack? Let's do it. While I have you here, guys, make sure you check out that description. Ooh, Fractured Identity, huh? Well, I don't play the older formats, but... Uh, Pitiless Carnage, all right. That looks like a cool one. Yeah, make sure you check out that description. We got that Discord link, as well as that Patreon link, too, if you're interested in supporting the channel that way. The best reason to join up the Patreon is if you want to have your uh, suggestions guaranteed for the channel. I'm a little bit backed up on comment suggestions and Discord suggestions right now, but I always do my best to get as many of them done as possible. Just for the for day one here, I'm sitting down to record uh, just some of the decks that I was most excited to try out with cards from the new set. So instead of going through different suggestions for this first day, just kind of doing a thing. Crash the towns in hand. We go first, huh? All right, we'll keep it. We got 25 lands in here, guys. We'll, we'll do our dandiest. 
Sharp Eyed Rookie on turn two, and hopefully we see a land every turn until we hit like five land. Honestly, dude, like we probably want five land on the board. All right, land off the top from now until our fifth turn. Yes, that would be ideal here. And gruel. Gruel prowess. Thran portal. I'll put in some work, Thran portal. Put in some work for me. Oh, a three, three. Okay, well, hold up. It still might be gruel, but you know what would be cool? Teamer prowess. Okay, we have trash the town. We could, uh, well... We got Snakeskin Veil and Tail Swipe. Its power is greater than Sharp Eyed Rookie. We did end up missing, unfortunately. We attempt. If we. Ah, eh, what the heck, huh? Like, keeping protection open would be good too. But, like, this is also a great swing. We get rid of a very chunky creature from them. And, like, honestly, removing protection on, like, if they go lightning strike the rookie instead of our face, that wouldn't be, like, the worst thing for us. So it took two cards to take out one of their cards, but it was two cards for a pretty good swing that turn, too, was the whole concept of that turn. And then hopefully we just end up having the ability to restock those two cards with Trash the Town, too. That all seems pretty good. And then also just hitting land for the rest of the game as well. Would be ideal. So likely Picnic Ruiner in this build. Stuff like that. Is what I would imagine. Yeah, getting a good swing early on like that is great when Thran Portal's over there. Every turn just poking a little bit of damage. If they passed it back, I would say they're keeping open a lightning strike. Breakout. Nice. Oh, it's going to be a spell spear. Very nice opponent. All right. Right. So another Hydra. Like I said, 25 mana in here. All right. I think we swing and then surprise the spree and then draw two, hopefully. Because I don't think they block. Because that's a really good block for us, right? Alright, and we go plus one. Pay the two. Down to 11, draw two. And we did it, guys. We got there. Scout comes down. Land, let's go. Okay, now it's rolling, huh? So being a land behind is really scary, and Gruul can be very, very explosive, especially with the Spell Spear, dude. I'll tell you what, if they flip this for the turn, too, I'd, I'd still be concerned about it. Luckily, Archdruid's Dream is a very good fight spell. Slick Shot Show Off. It's great to see day one, so many people playing with new cards already. Um, uh, We can chump on the ground the etching. I say no. I think we're... I, th I think if they're going to be explosive, they're going to be explosive. So if we block on the ground, like Monstrous Rage would be devastating for us. If we didn't block on the ground, Monstrous Rage would still be devastating for us. So like, you know, kind of like one extra damage on our side then at that point. Audacity. I wonder what they were keeping open instead of playing the Audacity, right? I wonder what that was. So, Hydra, swing for seven, die next turn for sure. Like, no doubt in my mind. Oh, bristle, Bristly Bill. Well, luckily, we couldn't have done that and something else on this turn. Well, I guess we could have. Could have played Bill, then a 1-1 one, one Hydra, then... Well, no, I guess... Yeah, Bill, Forest, buff, 1-1 one, one Hydra. That doesn't seem great. Especially when it's very likely that it's just going to be Archdruid's dream here. Charm, charm. I don't know if Archdruid's Dream is a card, but I always call this Dream for some reason. I think if there's anything else we want to do with this. 
One, two. Take out. Oh, this is tough. This is a tough decision. Okay, take out the slick shot. I think that's the most explosive. Okay, full swing, full swing. Uh, that way, if they tap out, we threaten lethal on the board even without getting a Hydra down. Really tough decisions, man. I'll tell you what, if we didn't miss a mana, I think this game would have gone a little differently too. I think we'd be sweating about this last bit of damage a little bit less. Uh, we could easily die here. Good thing the rookie has vigilance. Down to four. Command now. So we block the Swift Spear takes seven. Take six if we block here. They still got two cards in hand, so I'm assuming rookie dies regardless. Monstrous Rage would be on the Swiss Spear if we block the Swiss Spear. The Trample's already on the Spell Spear regardless. So I suppose to play around a Monstrous Rage victory, we block the Spell Spear, right? Right, right, Prowess, Prowess. Oh, Tyvar Stand. Oh, well, luckily, that's it. We got two on the board. Who endures isn't terrible, huh? Hydra for four. Swing for six. So we also could have kept the scout back, but we didn't know we were going to see another mana off the top too. Good game opponent. At any point, that could have been theirs. Easily, dude. Easily. All right. Only 26 minutes in. The deck is totally doing a thing right now. The Hydras are kind of just getting dumped into our hand. And I wonder if that's actually like a good thing, like seeing multiple Hydras turn after turn. I think the Vigilance is going to be wild, and at, at, at any given point... And okay, maybe we want to consider 26 mana. Probably not, right? The Scout's helping us a little bit with the Explorer. Kind of, kind of helping us a little bit, I guess. The Charm can help us find Bland, too. Eh, I don't know. 20, 25 should be enough. it goes first this is totally keepable right turn two beast caller turn three beast caller i'm okay with this at any point we could see one of our one mana cards too there are a lot of one mana cards in here so if we see we get draw on turn one draw on turn two draw on turn three we have three chances to hit a, a one drop to curve out properly here Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and pause until the opponent shows up. Okay, the opponent has arrived. Look at our horsies. Look at them go. Hey, there's a one drop. All right. Do I play it? Do I save it for turn three? Ultra greed. Let's do this. Especially when the scout could get picked up like right now from a cut down. All right. I guess it's a similar concept with the, with the beast caller, though. Like, oh, nothing. Okay. Well, look out. Has reach and... Whenever you commit a crime, look at the top five cards of your library. Put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped. Wow. I'll put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Okay, once per turn. Okay. Well, thank goodness on that, at least. Okay, stick to the plan do all this before combat because it affects combat uh scout huh heck yeah heck yeah we keep that on top anything that buffs these beast callers is this always gonna be a thing with creatures with reach oh no there it goes now it's gone that was weird right it had like a thing she oldred she oldred you are three turns too early Get off this board state shieldred, huh? So we can buff the alchemist, get the scout down on the same turn. Uh, or we go alchemist, buff a beast caller, scout buffs him again. Uh, so we want so we want scout first, because then whatever's on top might change our decision here, because we could go contaminator. 
Oh yeah, it's like it's warning us that this has reach. Something's going on, guys. No more no more surprise reach from the game. Maybe. So we go contaminator. We have a great swing here. We go alchemist, we get trample onto the beast caller. That's probably a better surprise for next turn. Let's hope that the opponent isn't rocking any board wipes. And we just like go in. We just, we go for it, huh? If they trade into either of these, we put counters on everything. That means second shieldred exists, huh? We're going to spread this wide. Yeah, GG opponent. We didn't even get a chance to play any of the new stuff. I'm upset about that now, right? I don't think we played any new cards there. Still green doing green. Very nicely. Beast Caller just uh, stacking off of itself. That was good. That was definitely worth keeping our one drop back to for the Ultra Greed. All right, guys. The deck feels good so far, huh? It's totally doing a thing. So the, que the, the question, of course, that we're going to have to ask at the end is, are all four Hydras actually worthwhile? They are mythic, too, so... I think it's a really sick card. I don't know if like mono green aggro is like the, the right place, but it kind of feels pretty good so far, right? I think so. Because we got to consider the Hydra the top end for the build. That's kind of the concept here. We haven't seen the treasures do a thing yet because when it got removed, it was exiled every time. So we'll see if the treasures ever come in handy. And they are tapped treasures too, but yeah, it plays into itself beautifully. Just get a bigger Hydra next turn, essentially. So Beast Caller on two, on three. A three mana Hydra should be totally fine depending on what they play. Or hopefully we see something else off the top because I'd like to trash the town. See, that could be really good. Okay. Tommy of Transients. So keeping Snakeskin Veil against this deck would be pretty good. Uh, or just having two very good creatures on the board for them to choose from could be really good too. Bloated Contaminator. Contaminator, wow. Was an excellent draw. Get that swing. Take the three. Removal is on its way, for sure. We got a lot to consider here. Like, if we put counters on Contaminator... One, two, three, four. We could spend all four, give Trample to the Beast Caller. Counters on Contaminator. And then uh, we get the... Proliferate on Contaminator, too. That could be really good. Probably keeping Snakeskin Veil open is a little bit better, though. Double block into Contaminator is possible. Snakeskin Veil gets around that. I mean, this is instant speed as well. Actually, really good, isn't it? All right, let's see what happens. Because we could draw for the turn, too. Really, they're letting all this go. But we don't need the trample. Crash the town. We'll draw two. We'll put two counters. Is that worth it? Maybe. Maybe just keeping the snakeskin veil is a little bit better here. Two mana snakeskin veil. And we might see a one drop too. So draw two. That seems kind of ridiculous, honestly. Contaminator. All right. We're going to stick to the plan. Keep the snakeskin veil back. As protection. At some point, these Kami of Transients get out of hand. And, uh, oh, Calyx on the board. Some fight spells would be good. They're probably going to keep some blockers back. And keeping the snakeskin veil back didn't work for us at all here. Calyx is perfect for the turn. Getting both of those up. Easy peasy. Easy trades for the opponent now. Right? Mana off the top. So if we go Contaminator number two, we'll still have Snakeskin Veil. We could go Hydra for three. 
still have Snake Skin Veil. If they block, the treasures don't help us too much because we don't have second Hydra. Um, at any point... Okay. Contaminator number two, right? Buffs the Beast Caller so they can't just block into that, right? And then we swing. If they block one Kami of Transients into Contaminator, Snake Skin Veil comes down. The Trample gets through. Uh, worth it, right? Totally worth it now that we have two Contaminators here. We get to keep both creatures. Opponent goes down to four. And we get to proliferate. All right. This board state's looking pretty good, but I think this could easily lean towards the opponent. For real. The trample is definitely going to come in handy. Especially on the Hydra, too. Kami of Transients. They're going all in on the Kami of Transients. Reign of Truth. They really are going all in on that one card. So, like, the... The wide trample is going to wrap up this game, guys. They swing. I guess that's it, right? We'll take the 13. I guess that's kind of their fun way of conceding, right? Another land off the top. The Hydra is going to come down as a 5-5. Dude. This feels pretty darn good, right? We have a lot of options, even if we're drawing poorly, which it kind of felt like it at the end there. Six mana comes down, Hydra drops as a 5-5, five, five, Vigilance Trample Haste, buffs the Beast Caller to 7 as well. Aminator, all, all of that. If any of them got through and for some reason the opponent survived, we would have potentially had like double Proliferate onto the Hydra, which that Vigilance could block really well too. Even if we're chumping with the Hydra and we get a ridiculous number of treasures, that just makes the next top deck of a Hydra just even more lethal, huh? Dude, let's end on a high note. We just took out Selesny Enchantments. Feels pretty good, especially when Selesny Enchantments is like, it just feels like it's always good, like it never slows down. Got a little lucky there where the opponent didn't have a lot of removal, but even if they had removal, we did have a couple turns where Snakeskin Veil was open too, so we really could have done a thing with that. A Snakeskin Veil just acting as a combat trick there ended up being much better, but still. Here's the deck list again, guys. Uh, 25 land felt good. I don't think I'd worry too much about this. I wouldn't go down to 24, I don't think, because we're kind of treating this Gold Vein Hydra as your top end. You're kind of looking at this as your four mana card or five mana card or six mana card or, yeah, anything after that. Anything after four, that's your Hydra. And we got four of them to fill in that top end slot. I should have went over that when I was going over at the deck, but I guess that is more suited for the more in-depth discussion here too, right? I wouldn't drop any forests for any like Mishra Foundries or anything either. I don't think Mishra Foundry is going to do as much like as a creature land as it's going to do like hold up your charm and stuff, right? And I think charm is a really good card. Um, very often you're just going to put a counter on something and be very happy to take out a creature. And then that counter works beautifully with the contaminator and literally everything else in here, huh? Bristly Bill. You know what I'm thinking? I think we can drop one of these and go up that Ozolith. I think that Ozolith would have been good. Well, hold on, hold on. This is a creature. When this creature hits, it buffs the Beast Caller. When this creature hits, it does not buff the Sharp-Eyed Rookie. It's actually pretty hard to buff the Rookie in here. A lot harder than I thought it would be. I guess that makes sense. Like, you know, the first buff of Rookie, the best one would be Alloy Alchemist. Which I actually really liked, too. The plot on this seemed pretty good. Like, just having that extra little bit of a boost to put Trample on a Beast Caller just seems ridiculous to me. Then play it out later on. After a board wipe, don't do what Red Cat did in that one game that we don't talk about, okay? Uh, no, yeah, just being able to play it after a board wipe for free. Reestablish your board. Buff the rest of your things. Buff the Sharp-Eyed Rookies. Get some clues, especially if you're up against Control. All of a sudden, you're able to spend all that excessive mana on the clues, restock your hand, which, speaking of which, Trash the Town was excellent today, dude. That bottom ability. Just, like, if you're not doing anything else on this, just two mana, draw two, is kind of insane for green. And it's not impossible to just do that consistently. When you're swinging with a big creature, there's a lot of moments where the opponent's like, well, I don't want to block that right now. 
or especially if it has trample too even if they do block it you're still getting that creature through so wow lots lots to say here but i do want to change the build a little bit i'm not convinced that bristly bill needs to be a two of it would have been really cool to see today but just not convinced you know what i mean at that point what do we want what did we see the most of what would have helped the most a third arch druid charm probably not 26 mana probably not <laughs> um a second hard hitting question yeah yeah just more like early uh actually maybe a third snakeskin veil is snakeskin veil that good also while we're here we can go ahead we can go ahead and get the the new artwork for snakeskin veil too there we go Although I do like the uh, old artwork too, but oh hey, we got fancy fancy pants artwork as well for this. Oh yeah, we don't need that. That's fine, guys. What are we thinking? We got one slot. Like I'm I'm just not convinced that we need two bristly bills. Like we could put that other ozolith in. Another creature would be good too. Is there like a is there like a legendary creature that we wouldn't mind having in here? Um, there's also. Like, we could think about ramp. I don't know if stalwart would be the thing that we want to see. But, like, um, I could see a one of... Bro, why can't I think of the name of the card that we play all the time? Loam Speaker. There we go. I could see a one of Loam Speaker. That is also a creature that buffs the sharp-eyed rookie when it comes in, and then it also taps. Like, you can keep a Loam Speaker open with a snakeskin veil for example so that little bit of ramp could go a long way as a one of though does it make a lot of sense maybe not maybe not let's consider let's let's put it in see what the deck looks like here real quick loam speaker one i don't know how i feel about that kind of looks funny i don't like it anymore <laughs> this is definitely something to think about though maybe it should have been in the honorable mentions just a little bit of extra ramp could go a long way in a deck like this I'm actually going to opt for the third snakeskin veil. We'll totally craft the one common for just to have the consistent new artwork in here. Now the early game doesn't look as clean to me, though. Ah, it doesn't have to look clean. All it has to do is play clean, and I think this will totally play clean. And I think three snakeskin veil for what we saw today will be pretty good. There's a lot of combat tricks where that counter goes a long way. I can't believe how well it works just like just that extra counter and you just it's just so good <laughs> it's it's like having that extra counter as opposed to like giving indestructible and gaining two life from like tamio's safekeeping or something like it's just so important like it just does so much yeah so i like this how do you guys feel about where we landed here then i guess there's something else to note where keeping open the one mana for the snakeskin veil was actually pretty tough so overall, it's going to really come down to what you're seeing in the meta. And I think we are like seeing a lot of like mono red and stuff. So there's a lot of burn, a lot of early burn. And there's going to be a lot of moments where Snakeskin Veil gets around that burn and then offers up a blocker on the ground that like a Swift Spear can't swing into successfully. Like a 2-3 Swift Spear swinging into a 3-3 Sharp-Eyed Rookie because you buffed it with the Veil and also stopped their play with fire from hitting the Rookie. At literally everything I just said will happen at some point <laughs> like it like that happens so often they swing with the two three they go for the play with fire snakeskin veil would just like blow that out of the water setting up a perfect blocker for the uh swiss spear too and at that point too like they could also go monstrous rage and stuff onto their own thing still kill the rookie but yeah you're taking a lot less damage as well yeah so i like the three veils hard hitting question there hasn't been too many planeswalkers recently to try to take out we could consider just the third tail swipe with the extra plus one plus one i actually am going to do that guys um so not only does the tail swipe instant speed make a lot of sense when we have a lot of other instant speed things in here uh, actually everything else is instant speed but also there weren't too many planeswalkers to hit and if we are hitting planeswalkers anyways you're probably just swinging at the planeswalkers with your big old trampley creatures right 
So I'm going to drop that hard hitting question. There we go. Now it looks a little cleaner. I don't know why that looks cleaner to me, but yeah. All right. Here's what I'm going to uh, land on then. Guys, I brought it up in like the middle of the video this time for some reason. That's probably a good idea. But hey, if you made it this far into the video, y'all are champions, first of all. Uh, second of all, make sure you check out that description where we got that Patreon link as well as that Discord link too. Uh, yeah, like I said, brought it up in the middle of the video. I probably should bring that up in the middle of the video more often. <laughs> okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the deck list as much as I did. I actually think it's really good. Also, guys, I've been forgetting to bring this up at the beginning of these uh, early season videos or whatever we want to call them, early in the set, right? But I highly recommend waiting to craft things for a couple weeks because we just never know where the meta is going to settle and it could be pretty sad to like use four mythic wild cards on gold vein hydra only to find out that the meta absolutely destroys poor hydra here right uh, uh, in a couple weeks of course uh, other than that like if you don't care about your wild cards then of course like yeah go for it uh, like, I definitely wanted all four of these because even if it is bad, I'll end up playing with it again at some point anyways. But just for, like, any deck, the first two weeks, man, at least, you never know where that meta is going to settle. There's a lot of really expensive stuff from this set, too. Like, I put together um, Is It Artifacts, and it's going to take, like, 11 Mythics to craft to finish that deck, so... I'm waiting a little bit on that to try to uh, crack more packs first before I go ahead and craft any of that up because that's silly and the deck is probably going to be janky too. So, But is this deck janky? No, probably not. I actually think it's pretty good. Uh, that being said, if like you wanted to craft some of the gold vein hydra but not all four, you could totally see a couple gold vein hydra in here and then just choosing something else for your top end that you already have access to as well. Because I still think a couple hydra would still uh, do the thing nicely instead for the top end. If you have like Axbane Ferox, that's a pretty good one. The haste is key here, right? There's a reason there's four of these. Um, other than just being a new card, that haste is very good. So like um, Axbane Ferox is one if you have those, but you don't have the Hydra or you don't want to craft the Hydra, that's a good trade out. And then Oddity as well, if you have Oddity. Same concept, dude. Yeah. Or maybe you just want to try crafting one Hydra. Exact same concept. Craft that one and then put like three oddities in. That would be pretty good. I think I think the deck would run pretty much the same. Uh, the Alloy Alchemist here is just an uncommon, luckily, so that's fun. And then the Snakeskin Veil is just a common. And then Trash the Town is uncommon. So the most expensive things from the new set is just the Hydra. So uh, there's some stuff you could trade out potentially if you wanted to wait on the Hydra too. Okay, guys. Hey, enough rambling. Uh, thank you again for being here, and I will see you in the next video.